Good evening and welcome to Ben TV. My name is Priscilla Nwipo. This evening I have with me the Senior Special Advisor to the President on Strategies, none other than Mr. Oranta Douglas. Good evening, sir, and welcome to the program. Yeah, good evening and good evening, GS. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. First and foremost, congratulations to the President and President-elect on the victory in this election. Thank you. I will pass your congratulations to him, but actually the congratulations to go to, should go to all Nigerians because we all made it happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, very quickly, INEC, before the elections we had issues. Um, postponement, bombing, how was it possible for them to be able to achieve what is now being spoken of as free, fair, credible? I think that uh, credit should go to the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, mm -hmm. Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, for uh, arriving at the position of electing or appointing people of credibility into mm. the Independent National Electoral Commission. Indeed. Appointing Jega and his men, mm. who are people of unblemished pedigree, mm -hmm. to man an institution that will ensure that the leadership recruitment processes of our country mm -hmm. are are, are, are credible in a way that those who come to govern us are people that pass that had a mandate of the Nigerian people. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to give credit to who credit is due. President Jonathan gets the credit, uh, Jega and his team also get the credit. And then above all, credit to the Nigerian people for insisting that their vote must count. Now, the elections were postponed mm -hmm. because Jega felt that things have to be done well. Mm -hmm. And in, in that postponement, he was able to perfect the elections in a way that by the time the National Assembly elections came, mm -hmm. people applauded. The presidential elections came, the whole world applauded. Mm -hmm. The diplomatic community, observers, various governments across the world have held elections as free, fair and credible. And it is because the individuals who man it are people you cannot bribe, are people you cannot influence, are people who believe that the spirit, the, 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 the power of the ballot must prevail over the power of the bullet and authoritarianism. And I think that uh, we are t we've taken a very bold step to ensure that Nigeria arrive. Indeed. Thank you, sir. Now, immediately after the, the, the elections, unfortunately, there was some violence in the north. The president had promised that all those who are found to perpetrate violence, he was going to ensure that justice is brought to them. What is he doing right now to ensure that that doesn't continue? Well, you see, Nigeria is a very diverse country, mm -hmm. and Mr. President knows that, mm -hmm. and Mr. President had embarked on, on an all-inclusive policy of bringing everybody together under one roof. Mm -hmm. Those who protested mm -hmm. on the streets, they are being listened to, right. and the way to listen to them is to avail every single person the opportunity of going to court to prove his case. Mm -hmm. We are a nation that must be guided by the rule of law. That's and Mr. Right. President had opened, uh, had created at that avenue for ensuring mm -hmm. that the rule of law prevails. Mm -hmm. I, I personally, I, I don't believe in religious violence to mm -hmm. express a grievance. We've got to be peaceful, we've got to be non-violent in our activities. Mm -hmm. And I am sure that those who are perpetrating this acts of violence, they, they, they know that the path they have taken mm -hmm. is not the path that will keep our country together. It's not a path that will advance us to the next level of development. It's not a path that will make other nations respect us. Mm -hmm. Such a beautiful, such a wonderful election mm -hmm. is now being tainted by, right. by, 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 by the report of violence. Mm -hmm. And I think it is not good for Nigeria. We've got to find a solution, and that solution is being found by the unanimity of all Nigerians saying we've got to get it right. Mm -hmm. And we've taken a bold step to get it right. You see, we shouldn't forget, America, 250 years of America's democracy, yes, they yes. still had the Florida shard vote. Mm. But people didn't go to the street to burn houses, to burn mm. churches, to, to, to kill people, uh, burn mosques, and so on. Mm. They didn't do that. Mm. They, they took the, the Al Gore. Remember Al Gore and Bush? Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, Al Gore had to go to court. Yes. And at the end of the day, the Supreme Court had to take a position. Mm. That is what people, Nigerians, should should do. Mm. That is what the leading contenders in this election should do. Mm. A resort to violence, you know, should not be what should, should help us to move forward. That's right. So but what are the steps taken to protect the innocent in the North? The, the key right thing now. here is that um, the security forces mm -hmm. have been encouraged to ensure that the rule of law prevails. Right. You see, there's a way you deploy security forces and they could become unhelpful to mm. the situation. So a civilized way of doing that, Mr. President being a man of peace, mm -hmm. had insisted 
that the right thing be done. Security mm. forces be deployed mm -hmm. to ensure that there is peace, to protect the innocent, mm. to protect the, the populace, mm. so that we do not have to go to the level where we, our own people are killed. Mm. I'm talking of the Nigerian people. Mm. Ordinary Nigerians are celebrating in their homes that we have arrived, mm. that for the first time their votes counted. And where there are imperfect areas, they can be corrected through the rule of law, That's through right. accessing the court and ensuring that those areas are corrected. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate that uh, the, the, the violence that had erupted in parts of the country, mm -hmm. you know, attempted to taint our sweet, the, 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 the sweet soup of our democracy. We, we will ensure mm -hmm. by our collective work, all Nigerians, wherever they are, that mm -hmm. such does not happen again. Thank you. You mentioned focus on education. The education system at the moment is quite dilapidated. What exactly will the president be doing to be able to bring that up, to restore it back to the standards that it once had? Well, fortunately for us, and we have had the opportunity of seeing Mr. President at work in the last nine months. Okay. And in the last nine months, he was able to bring education as number one priority. Mm -hmm. Before now, the budgeting system in Nigeria had focused attention on defense, on all other things not taking education, which is the key to all of this, you know, to every other item in the budget, mm. it is education. Mm. For the first time, education is number one, mm. uh, you know, and he had uh, proceeded to say, look, it is not just putting education as number one in terms of budgeting, but what, what effort have we done to ensure that education is on the right track? Mm -hmm. Remember when he came in, there was this mass failure in WIAC and NECO. And he said, look, we can't continue this way. Mm. So he summoned a national summit on education. Mm. And for two days, brought in experts, the old men and women that were key in keeping our educational standard at high level mm. in, in, the, in the olden days, yes. and the new ones, and to come together to brainstorm as to how we need to, to go. They came up with recommendations. They, they, they he then proceeded to set up a task force to review the recommendation, and then a plan of action was put in place. Mm -hmm. The result is... One, there's more money being sent to the old universities. Okay. Nine new universities have now been set up. Mm -hmm. And the reason for those nine universities is to allow for access and quality. Mm -hmm. It is not just establishing the universities. Mm -hmm. The university being established, the nine universities being established now, will not be the big university. They will be small campus universities focused on specific areas mm -hmm. of, 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 of expertise so that they will take it step by step, mm -hmm. you know, and then looking at access and quality. And they are distributed to states. Mm -hmm. We are a federation. Mm -hmm. These new universities are distributed to states that have no universities. Mm -hmm. So students, our citizens, will have access. Less than 10% of Nigerians who want to go to school have access to university education. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the privileged people mm -hmm. then come to England, they go to America, and so mm -hmm. on. But the vast majority of the people in Nigeria don't have access. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Jonathan is saying that Every Nigerian must have access to education mm. if that person wants to go to school. And the kind of education is not just the formal one. There is also the issue of the skill ones in terms of training, technical skill for, for, the, uh, for, for, for our people. You've spoken a lot about the higher education. How about the lower level of education? Kindergarten education especially is uh -huh. now receiving a lot of attention. Uh -huh. Not just at the federal level, uh -huh. but states like River State, Bayelsa, and a couple of states have been encouraged to look at the whole question of kindergarten education. I know the work of what uh, the River State government mm. uh, and through the wife and the governor are doing in terms of kindergarten education, where they, they have gone around the, the whole local government and established and kindergarten schools with a view to getting the kids into school. So when their parents are going are out there farming and fishing, the children are warehoused in, 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 in kindergarten schools mm. and they are being taught. Those processes are slow, but in the next five to ten years, I am sure that the whole part, the whole of the country mm. will key into it. Right now, kindergarten schools are only being enjoyed by people who have access to money, mm -hmm. the privileged few. Mm. But Governments like those that I've mentioned are now trying to democratize that through charity processes and so on. And I think that uh, we are getting there. Good. We talked, you mentioned also earlier about power. Now, the president has also said that he will give us more. By the end of this year, we are to expect more um, where power is concerned. What exactly, what specifically is more? What will he be doing more? Well, you see... Under the previous government, there was the NIPP, the mm. Independent Power Project, National mm. Independent Power Project, that were put in place. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Jonathan came in and said, a time has come for all this project to come on stream. So he moved in 
to ensure that contractors and individuals that were that have anything to do with NIPP deliver on what what arrangements and agreement that have been reached. Mm -hmm. He then proceeded to go to Lagos and launch the road, the power roadmap. Right. That was launched. And as we speak, most the, the implementation processes are on. Mm -hmm. Power, I don't like to put statistics to it, but there have been reports of improvement of power in various parts of the country. It's not enough. Mm -hmm. Marginal improvement, but it is a foundation that we need to move to the next level. And I believe that in the next 24 months, the situation in the power sector will be very salutary. Salutary enough for Nigerians to say we are seeing a difference. Mm -hmm. So processes are on, and I believe that uh, with the current effort being put in place, we, we should be beginning, begin to say that uh, our power situation is coming to stabilize. Right, OK. Now, um, moving a, a little bit away from, you know, that aspect of things, the President had promised, again, that he will give 35% of ministerial and ambassadorial roles to women, should he be elected again as President. Again, I ask the question, how does he intend to achieve this? Because within our society, women have been marginalized. It's a very male-dominated society. How do you think the men will, is it something that the men within the party will, will welcome, and the, including those within government? How would, will he go about this? See, Mr. President keeps his promises. Mm -hmm. Whatever promise he makes, he keeps. Okay. Now, what he said was that 35% of non-elective position. That's right. He did not specify only, he didn't mention ministerial or ambassadorial, non-elective, right. meaning that that is a cumulative thing, and it is as a political party, mm -hmm. and if he speaks for the PDP that he heads, it means from the local government, okay. through the state, okay. to the federal, the percentage of appointed position mm -hmm. will be 35%. So if you put all of them together, mm -hmm. you'll find that any position that is appointed, whether they are commissioners, or they are ministerial, mm -hmm. ambassadorial, mm -hmm. or special assistant, mm -hmm. senior special assistant, all those positions put together, mm -hmm is what will make the 35 percent. Mm -hmm. So it is not just 35 percent of ministers, 35 percent of ambassadors, it is all of it. Mm -hmm. if, if you put everything together, if it is 100 percent, 35 percent of the totality of the appointments will go to women. He has made that promise and he's going to keep it. Excellent. So what you're telling me today or what you're telling the viewers equally is that this 35 percent will be made up right from the grassroots all the way right through to the very top. That, that, that is what it's supposed to be and that is what the vision of the president is. But he has no control over the appointment at the state. He has no control over the appointment at the local government. Mm -hmm. He has control over the appointment at the federal level. Remember, we operate a federal system of government. That's right. And as a head of the federal government, as a mm -hmm. head of as president, mm -hmm. and as a leader of the party, he has responsibility mm -hmm. to inform all other tiers of government that this is a position of the party mm -hmm. and we need to implement it. And I believe Mr. President will implement his own part. Okay, thank you. Because I, I, my next question was going to be, how does he plan to police the local government and the <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. as well as the governors to ensure that they take on, you know, that the issue of... I think the, the governors and local government chairman uh, will tow the party line because the time has come for womanhood to take its rightful place in the scheme of things. Mm -hmm. If you, like I come from a place where we, we inheritance is maternal, so we, we sort of uh, focus attention on womanhood. If you support the woman, the society will be better. So if we support the woman through empowerment, through these appointive offices or economic empowerment or whatever empowerment that can be made, you are empowering the family, you are empowering the community, you are empowering the nation. Mm -hmm. Mr. President knows that. And it is in this regard that he has taken it upon himself to insist that women